Happy New Year to you all and welcome back to the first Davy Brown restoration video of 2023. For those of you new, my name's Barry. Well, what have we been doing during the Christmas break, eh? Um, as you've seen between Christmas and New Year, if you're regular to the channel, um, if not, pop back and have a look at the video. We stripped the gearbox down to its major component levels. What we did after that was we stripped the components down to the individual components, cleaned everything. I've got it all set up outside here, give you a look at it. It's nearly ready to go back together. The last thing we have to do is we have to pull the bearings off the diff. Personally, I don't think the bearings are worn. I don't think they're damaged. There's a bit of grittiness in them, but I think that is just dirt. And you'll see when you look at them, the design of them, you can't really get in to give them a good bath. So we're going to pull the bearings off, give them a good bath, have a good inspection. If we decide they're worn, at that point they'll get replaced. If they're not worn, they can go back on. But in the meantime, the gearbox can be rebuilt. We don't need the diff bit done to rebuild the gearbox because, as you know, it just the diff just bolts into the back. We'll need it to set it up because we need to set backlash and we need to set side thrust um, and we need to check the pinion play with a crown wheel but we'll have a look at that um, early next week I'm going to be talking to Raymond from Rothbury who very kindly has offered to help me with the bearings I don't have a puller that big I did check online for a set of bearing knives to go in under the bearing to be able to pull it off the ones that I saw for that size of bearing 750 quid ouch so um, I went on Facebook the Davy Brown tractors group on Facebook and Raymond answered and said give us a bell talk to me in Rothbury uh, and we'll see what we can do so that's what's gonna happen with the diff so I'm out here we're gonna use the Dremel uh, and my wire brush mud drill and we're going to give these bits and pieces a bit of a scrub up today um, hopefully <clears throat> because when you have a look at it there was quite a bit of surface rust even on the gears in that layer shaft I'll give you a quick look at it I've already hit this here with a wire brush on the enemy drill right we see in here so what I'm doing getting the old Dremel and getting in between the teeth here and cleaning as much as we can out because the last thing you want is this turning into mulching your oil and destroying your pump and your bearings right let's get on with it This will be fairly easy to find out because you can see the colour changing in there and you know once you've been around them but <clears throat> Lance, John Perry, Shane you were right Get the gearbox to bits, give it a good cleaning. And then you put it back together 
all the bearings that I've come across so far seem to be good. Um, and this is just, this is coming straight off this. So I'm just wondering if this is just light, well it is, it's light surface rust. It's probably accumulated from sitting inside my shed for nearly a year. These are grand little things, these dremels, aren't they? Huh? Right. So I'm going to crack on and get through the rest of this. And uh, <clears throat> I need to get in here for something. Because in here, there's a little bit of rust in there. But we'll crack on, we'll get it done. Right, so where are we at at the minute? All four side rails had a bath. They're never going to look like brand new, are they? But uh, these are coming cleaner than the other ones because I don't think these ones aren't as old and they weren't as pitted. These are soaked in oil, I give them a rub of oil. So we're getting the four side rails done. Selectors done. They're coming quite good. I'm pleased with them. I'm getting the... That one's a bit... Uh... That's stained. It's not... When you feel it, that's not rough. It's just stained. It's been wire brushed right the way along. Oh, yeah, that might actually... We'll try that again, I think, maybe. I say it's just stained. Some of them's come up bloody beautiful, haven't they? Bear and carrier. These have just had a wash in diesel. Getting in there, cleaned all that out. The cups are still in because I haven't got a puller that I can get in there and pull them out with. And I don't want to go in and start knocking them out with a hammer. Lear shaft, so I've had a scrub and a bath now, I've got it in here just dripping, those bearings are good, there's no, no notchiness and not clicking in them, um, so I'll just leave them in there dripping, and once the surplus diesel drips off them, we'll then get them, or we'll get these greased to hell and back. There's the shims in the outer race for that one in there. So, um, yes, we'll give these today just to drip off, and then I'll come in tonight uh, and I'll wrap these up in cloths. I'll soak these in, I will bury these in grease, these bearings. Um, we'll pop it into a clean polythene bag. I get it wrapped up in a cloth. All right, now so we'll pull the reverse idle off the shaft. We'll give this a good clean. Everything get a good wash. Good liberal coating with grease. Oh, we're back together. Right, so we'll strip the pinion shaft. We've got here pinion nut, large washer off the front, the spacer that goes on. Because there's a bearing goes in here, there's, a, there's an opposite bearing to this goes in here. You've got the spacer goes in between the bearings. This one's got machine face on both sides. But that one goes in, the shims go in with the brass shim on the roller. On the inner race of the roller bearing. We've then got the gears and they face the the selector ring in there, that's looking really gorgeous, isn't it? The selector rings face each other in the middle of the shaft. Now we've got the bearing. The big bearing here is kept on by a circlip. 
Now I've removed the circlip, but the bearing is still pushed onto the shaft. And when you look at it, we aren't going to gain anything from taking the bearing off. We'll wrap the bearing up when we're cleaning this on the wire brush. But we're not going to gain anything by knocking that bearing out of position. I thought if we took the snap, the snap ring off here, I thought the bearing might have just been sitting on the shaft, but it isn't. It's still quite, a, it's a really tight fit because I had a couple of knocks here with my brass punch and my hammer. But I think it really needs a, a good press on that, which I haven't got. So I've we'll knocked it back into position, put the clip back in. Tomorrow, that's going to get a really good wire brushing, cleaning, a greasing. I'm putting back together. We've got the pinion shaft all washed up, cleaned. And right round the teeth on the, the gears, getting all them cleaned up. Got the bearing in heating up. As soon as it comes up to temperature, we'll stand this up on its end. Hopefully the bearing is just going to drop straight down onto here. I've got my hammer, my brass drift ready, just in case it doesn't. And we'll see. There's my bearing on, right down the collar. Um, I say heated it up in the pan for about 10 minutes, get it nice and big, got it over the neck here. It's stuck a little bit here, but I think it's stuck because it was just tipped. Once you got it square and you got it onto the parallel surface, it literally dropped into position. Um, and all I used was a tiny little punch on the inner race. You don't want to be hitting the cage or the rollers at all. So you need a little punch. What would have been nice, I would have been a tube to go down over the top to sit on the race. I tried my big tube that I had, you know, when I took the gearbox to bits, but it was too big. I'm convinced it was catching the race. Uh, sorry, the cage. I'm convinced it was catching the cage and I didn't want to be taking any chances. So I'm just going to let that cool now. That'll nip back into position. Jobs are good.
just I'll carry on with this and my brush giving it a bath and then we'll call it a day. So starting up here, we've got the Baron Carrier, both the front and back Baron races are still in, front castings had a bath, then we have the pinion shafts, I've still got the Baron just covered up in a bag, but as you see these have all been cleaned up, went through that with a Dremel, cleaned it all up, everything's greased to high heavens. We've got here thrust washer, shims, spacer, it goes in the middle of the bearings, shims for the, the front the front carrier, shims for the, the uh, bearing that is on this top shaft, the input shaft. Front, we've got the outer race and bearings for the lay shaft. Over there we have the high low selector and side rails, input shaft, reverse one, two, three selectors, side rails, diff keeps with the lock washers. In there we've got the bear the big bearing race, the outer race for the uh, uh, pinion bearing. On there. In this little bag, it's a bit grubby, 
But in this little bag right in here, where my thumb is, is the pin for this thrust washer on the back. I've kept it in the bag because if I put it out like that, it'll go missing. So in there we've got three springs, two ball bearings, an interlock, the reverse detent. We need to make a little tool. Or we're going to try and put those in like we did the last time using punches. Six bolts and washers to go into the bearing carrier. In here we have a replacement for the damaged washer. Still haven't found out why that bearing came backwards. I don't understand how that could have happened. Because that washer there has got a major flat on it where it has been worn away. And I just don't understand how that could have happened because that nut and bolt was tight um, in the correct place but I just don't understand how that's happened. Diff been all wire wheeled, cleaned up. We've had a look down the side it. No signs of any corrosion down the side. The corrosion seemed to be here. And this is just staying and left on here now. There's no corrosion. As I say, those bearings, there is no plate in them whatsoever. You just, you cannot get in. I'll put a picture up here of what this cage looks like. Because I've got the old bearings. Remember the old gearbox I took to bits ages ago? Um, the bearings literally dropped to bits when I took that off. So I'll show you what this cage looks like. It, and you'll understand why we cannot get into it to give it a good bath. And that's why I want these off. So we can get in and get them a good bath. Right. Little question that I've got for you. Remember the old gearbox that took the bits? Go back and have a look at it on this, this link here. Um, the lay shaft had ball bearings in it, either end. I've read in the service manuals that later on, Davy Brown changed from ball bearings to tapered roller bearings so that you could set the thrust on them. There isn't any mention of going to parallel rollers. This layer shaft's got parallel rollers on both ends. And the float is set with those shims next to that bearing cup there. If someone has got any idea, I've, I've had a look in the service manuals, have a look at the service updates, there is a mention of going to tapers, but there is no mention of going to parallel rollers. So if somebody knows that date, or what year, you know, not so much the date, but the year, that'll give us an idea of how old this gearbox is. Um, because looking at it, it's not that old. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. I hope it shows you as to what level we'll break our components down to clean them, hopefully salvage as much as we can from the existing components of the tractor. I know I always said I wouldn't do a video on cleaning because it was just wire brushing and things like that. But I felt you might like to see this one because of what it is, because it's the gearbox. So, if you found it useful, please give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. It's amazing how much help just that subscription gives us it doesn't cost you guys a penny it's totally free so hopefully if the weather's kind to her we'll get this built up over the weekend early next week we'll get that diff sorted out next week 10 days fingers crossed we should have that back in the tractor sorted out right guys thank you very much as always your time is greatly appreciated and Remember, 
don't overthink it. It's just nuts and bolts. We'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Stay safe.